So hello everybody. Mm, my name is Julia Matteo and I'm presenting uh, deploying and authorized uh, distributed application instance. No? Louder? Like that? You hear me? Okay. Uh, so who am I? Uh, I'm a Java developer uh, and tech lead at Orkis GRC. It's a an IT service company based in Geneva, Switzerland. Uh, and I also organize uh, GDETSIS in Switzerland. Uh, so it's a, an organization. Uh, we, we try to give uh, more visibility to women in IT. And we also try to attract women to IT. But we don't have a lot of, <laughs> of success till now. Um, so these are my Twitter addresses. And this is our blog of GDETSIS. So the summary of this presentation, we are going to touch all, all of these points. Uh, so we are going to, to see what Mesos is. Uh, I'm going to, to speak briefly about Docker, but I, because I imagine most of you know what Docker is. Who, who already worked uh, with Docker in, in the room? OK. Um, then we are, I'm going to present Marathon, uh, a Mesos framework. Um, I'm going to present you a distributed application. Uh, we are going to, to deploy on, on the Mesos cluster. Uh, we are going to, I'm going to show you two ways of doing service discovery on a Mesos cluster and how to do load balancing as well. So what's Mesos? I like the definition given in this book, uh, Building Applications in Mesos by David Greenberg. Um, he, he defines Mesos as a deployment system, system but also uh, as an execution platform. So why a deployment system? We can consider Mesos a, as a smart deployment system. Uh, I imagine most of, uh, most of you know uh, tools like Ansible, Chef, Puppet. These tools um, allow us to define in an understandable way uh, the steps of, of the installation of, of your applications and the configuration. Um, but this is a, a static definition of, of the configuration. It's a static configuration. For example, if we want to build a Mesos cluster from scratch, we, this would be useful to use Ansible, Chef, Puppet. We are going to say, OK, I want these IPs, um, in these machines, to be the, the Mesos, master, Mesos masters, and these others, uh, these others to be the slaves. And on the other hand, Mesos is going to, um, to present a way more dynamic to, de to do this deployment. It's going to take into account uh, external factors, such as the cluster load. And depending on, on this, it will deploy your application in one node or another. Um, so as I said before, it can also be defined as an execution platform. Uh, but you can say, OK, I already host my application while using Mesos. The answer is flexibility. Um, with, for example, Marathon, uh, the framework Mesos, uh, the Mesos framework, um, if one instance of the cluster crashes, it will automatically deploy your application in another, in another slave. Uh, we can also use uh, HA proxy for load balancing. So Mesos can, can be seen as an alternative to a third party platform as a service uh, solution like Heroku or Google App and Google App Engine. Sorry. You can see Mesos as an abstraction of your clusters of your cluster resource resources. Um, you are going to be able to share the resources of your cluster among different frameworks or even different versions of the same framework. Uh, this facilitates uh, resource fair sharing as well as data locality. So this could be one of the po possible configurations of a, of a Mesos cluster. Uh, in this one, we have two masters and nine slaves. In five of them, we are executing Spark. And in four of them, uh, Hadoop. Um, in a, in an environment of production, we recommend to have at least uh, four master nodes um, 
to, uh, in order to manage uh, failover. And how does it work, Mesos? It, it uses um, uh, offers and demand, uh, uh, an offer and demand uh, pattern. So uh, um, the slaves are going to register to the master. Uh, they are going to say, okay, I have uh, four giga of memory and two CPUs. Then the Mesos master is going to offer uh, these resources to, to one of the frameworks. Uh, for example, Marathon, and the framework is going to accept or, or reject uh, this offer de depending on, on the needs, on its needs. If it accepts, the Mesos master is going to execute the framework on, on this slave. So now I'm presenting briefly Docker. So as you know, uh, Docker is a tool, is an open platform to build, ship, and run your applications. Your, your distributed application, distributed applications. Um, it's a bit similar the concept to virtual machines. So here uh, on the on your left, uh, you have uh, four virtual machines. Um, so each one of the virtual machines, as you as you see, has its own copy of the of the of the operating system of the guest operating system. So even if three of them share the, the same, each virtual machine is going to have its own copy. Uh, the same happens to the libraries. Uh, even if we share the same, if we have the same, if we use the same libraries in four of the virtual machines, we, we don't reuse them. On the other hand, we have uh, four Docker containers. And instead of a hypervisor, we have the Docker engine. So we are going to share the operating system kernel as well as all the libs and binaries in common. Uh, this is going to make containers really fast at startup. And we have a little bit less of isolation than with virtual machines. So in Docker, we have two concepts, uh, Docker images and Docker containers. Mm, Docker images are only read-only. You can see them as the combination of several snapshots of your file system. So in one of the snapshots, uh, you can have your operating system like CentOS. Then you have uh, another slide like your web server, Jetty, and your application in this example. Um, on the other hand, a container is an instance of uh, your Docker image. It's going to be writable. Uh, but it's immutable. So you start your container, you can do manipulation, uh, manipulations on it, uh, but once you stop it, you are going to lose uh, all the changes. They are immutable. Mm, it's like a document image can be the installer of a program uh, of yours, and you can see a container as the, the program already installed. So, in order to, to deploy our distributed app, we are using Marathon. It's um, a Mesos ma uh, framework uh, written in Scala. It's really easy to, to deploy with it um, Docker containers, even if you can deploy as well uh, service, uh, services, uh, normal services, uh, command line uh, uh, launched. Um, its aim is, uh, is to manage um, high available applications. So he, if, if one of the instance crashes, he is going to, to find the resources necessary to deploy the app in, in another place. Um, it has a really nice uh, developer-oriented oriented REST uh, API. So in the same uh, schema, schema of before, Marathon would be in that place, I guess. You can, you can imagine it in that place. And in, our, in, la, in the demo I'm going to make, uh, we installed in the, in the Mesos uh, master node, because we only will have one, one master node, we will have uh, Marathon installed in the same instance. So now I'm going to make a, 
I'm going to show you the application we are going to distribute. So I have it. So it's composed of two containers only. Uh, the back and the database is a Mongo container, MongoDB container. Do you see well the the command line on the bottom behind? Yes. Um, so I have just oh, so one second. <laughs> So I, I have just uh, launched the the, doc, the Mongo Docker container, and now I'm going to launch um, the, the the web app. So it's a web app uh, developed by a colleague of mine, Katia Aresti, who will be a mother in these days. Otherwise, she would be here with me presenting this this presentation. Uh, it has been developed uh, developed in Go language. And she has used the uh, Gribel framework uh, to do it. So now I have just uh, deployed the, app, uh, the containers in my local machine. Oh. So it's a very simple application. I'm creating an account. Mm, so you can select the day, the room, and a talk. Okay. I don't know why you don't see them. And we can vote the, the talk. So that's the application we are going to, to distribute. Uh, in the demo, I, I deployed this, uh, the message cluster is on DigitalOcean, this, uh, this cloud solution. Mm, so we are using one message master, uh, with the instance is called Jupyter. We, I use the, um, the name of, the, of Jupyter Moons to describe the, the message lakes. And Jupyter uh, is the Mesos master. So this is digital digital ocean console. So as I said, we have Jupiter with the Mesos master and four slaves. Um, this is the this is Mesos uh, Mesos uh, UI. Mm, so in in Mesos UI, we can see the number of slaves we have, the resources which are available, used, offered, either. You can also see all the frameworks installed. So in this case, we I just uh, installed Marathon, and we see we are, we can access the logs of the four mesoslips. This is the Marathon uh, UI portal. So. In this UI, we, we will be able to, to see all the applications running, deploying, those who are suspended. And this is the, as well as the result of the health checks. Mm, okay, don't, so, um, as I said, we, we have, uh, the, f the web app, which is CM voting, and, and the database, which is MongoDB. We are going to need to do service discovery um, because CM voting needs to access the, the database. Mm, so service discovery will, will, will be needed to, in order to find the IP, the port, 
and the credentials, well, in this case, we don't need the credentials, mm, to access MongoDB. MongoDB. Um, in other cases, we, we could have uh, several instances of, of the database. Because of rep replication, we, we may need load balancing and to manage uh, failover. So for, for doing service discovery, um, I have used uh, Mesos DNS. It's a, a really simple tool to do service discovery. So Mesos DNS has a record generator. So um, is Mesos DNS is going to ask Mesos master uh, the IPs and the, and the ports of, of each app that registers to, to the Mesos cluster. And, and each Mesos slave is going to ask Mesos DNS uh, where the service is uh, located. So now we are going to deploy, because Mesos DNS is a Docker container. We can use it as a Docker container. Mm, you think like this is really pra practical because Marathon is going to, um, to manage its availability. Uh, in this case, we only have one Mesos DNS, but it's recommended to have more than one in case of failover. So in order to launch uh, Mesos DNS, uh, with Marathon, we have mm, to do an H HTTP post of, of a JSON. So you can see the, the JSON there. Um, so we, we execute the binary in the command line with the, the configuration file. Uh, we receive one CPU, two, mm, 256 uh, megabytes. We give it uh, an ID. We say we want to execute it in one instance. and in this case, we are going to, to, to fix this constraint. Constraint. We want to deploy Mesos DNS on the Europa uh, slave, because all the rest uh, of slaves will have to point to, to Mesos DNS in order to, to, to do the lookups. So now we are going to do the, the post. So we do the post to Marathon. This is the URL of, of Marathon in the cluster. So as you can see, this is the, we can see the container running. Um, also in the console, we can see the the name of the slave and the port uh, marathon assigned to it. Mm. It's a random port starting on the on thirty one thousand on the thirty one thousand port. Now we are going to launch uh, the Mongo container. So. I'm using this plugin of Chrome um, Postman to do the post instead of Core. Um, so as you see in, in that part of the container description, uh, we specify the, that network is of type bridge. So th this allows us to map the, the container port uh, 27,017 uh, to uh, zero. zero means um, it's a convention for Mesos. It's a random port uh, given by, by Mesos. So now in Marathon portal, we can see the, the two containers are running. So everything got OK. Mm, we see the port. Uh, Mesos has given to, to Mongo. And now uh, we are going to use the dig command, uh, Linux command. So it's a command that allows us to make on the command line uh, DNS queries. We are going to check this way that 
Nessos DNS finds the Mongo service when we do a lookup. So marathon service always are called like this, name of the service dot marathon dot Nessos. Nessos. So no, uh, I have just done um, a lookup uh, of type A the, uh, DNS. So it's going to answer the um, the, the IP, but not the port. And this is the, the internal IP in DigitalOcean. Um, but as Mesos gives uh, an aleatory port to the service, we will need something else. We need the port. So oh <laughs> I don't see yes. So we have one answer. And as you can, ah, no. Sorry. One second. So it's going to give us the, the port as well. So you see the port is 31,599, as well as the IP. Mm. Mm. So we already know a way of doing service discovery, but we need to, to, to have an access point uh, from from an external point of access to our application. In order to do this and load balancing, we are going to use LD Marathon. Uh, so it's a tool for managing uh, the proxy, HA proxy. It's a really simple, basic, uh, and basic uh, proxy. So th there's uh, several ways of configuration. One of them uh, is su uh, subscribing to Marathon's event bus, but um, in the demo, we are going to, to do polling, uh, to, the, to poll uh, Marathon to get uh, the information. Um, so LV Marathon is going to, to update the HA proxy uh, in, real, uh, in real time. Uh, it allows also health checking and SSL support. Uh, LV Marathon is going to obtain the information, the information from Framework Marathon, where the services are deployed and, and the ports. And with this information, it's going to update the HA proxy configuration in real time. Um, so we are going to do this now. Um, First of all, we are going to deploy two containers of the front of the web app. So same operation as we as with the Mongo container. Mm. So we have the image, the Docker image of the web app in Docker Hub. It's a, a public repo of the, the public repo of Docker. So this is the name of the image, mm, gmaterial CN voting. Mm. So now, as you see, uh, we are doing an HTTP post. We are going to deploy two instances of the image. Um, we, are, you, you, we are mapping the port uh, 9000 to to the to the one message chooses for us. So as you see, it's already launched. We can also see the the name of the machine is, is deployed on and the port. Mm. 
now we are going to change it. It's working. It's, it's true, the information we got from a marathon UI. It's working. So we, we have two front containers running, and now we are going to, to use LV Marathon. It's also a Docker container um, to create um, an access point from, from the exterior. So in order to launch uh, LV Marathon, um, we just map uh, the default port is 10,000. We specify the URL of Marathon. And in this case, as you see, we are going to, we speci I specified Paul, because instead of, of, many, of communicating with events, we are going to Paul the Marathon to obtain the information we need. And so we launch the, the load balancer. These are two parameters we, we need in order to configure it, uh, HA proxy. So now we see the, the container is running, the load balancer. We are going to look at the logs of the container. So wh what's he doing, LVD Marathon? As you, see, as you see in the logs, he's reading the information from Marathon. He's, he's doing a get from Marathon. Uh, 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 he got the applications. Uh, he found Mesos DNS, Mongo, and uh, uh, CN voting. Mm, and now he's generating the config for HA proxy. And so the front end, the port front end will be at uh, 10,000 as we defined in the command line when we launched the container. Mm, and in the backend, as you see, he defined two nodes. You see backend server at Ganymede and backend server uh, at IO. So he detected that the, there are two instances running the same application. They go up. So if we connect, connect to the front end port, uh, where we will have access to the to the web app and and the lo load balancer, uh, LV Marathon serves as load balancer and, uh, and an ex as an external proxy. So this is the configuration generated for HA proxy by Marathon LV. Well, you see in, in the front end, we have the port 10,000, and in the back end, we have Ganymede and IO with the IPs, the corresponding IPs and port. Mm, we have a last demo. So in this demo, we are going to say to to see how 
eh, LV uh, Marathon manages the failover. Just, just to test it's actually working. So for this, we are going to power off one of the instances, IO. This takes a while. So it's already powered off. Mm, so this is the one. Now I'm I'm looking at the it's a proxy configuration generated by LV Marathon to see if it if it detects that one of the instances is down. So until now there he detected it and he removed the line from from the config. So as you say, as you see, there is only one one server uh, in the backend. But uh, the application uh, is still available, so the load balancing is working. So we used Mesos DNS. It, it does the job, but it, it has uh, some drawbacks. Uh, first, uh, it does not have a fast failover. Um, it doesn't identify service ports, uh, as we said before. So we need to do a lookup uh, SRV, and this doesn't come out of the box uh, uh, normally with, applica with applications. In applications, there is no health checking. And also, usually, um, where is my big car, car? And so, in case of a crash, we, we might point to a to a fake instance, uh, an error, to the bad instance. Uh, so, an alternative, the we can also use LV Marathon for service discovery. So, this would be a possible architecture. In in our case, we could have a LV Marathon running on each of, of the slaves. Mm, we could use the service port. Uh, when, when we do a post to Marathon, we, we can also specify the service port. And so this will be fixed uh, by us. And LV Marathon is going to, to forward in the service port to the real port assigned by, by Mesos. Mm. When when there are request, requests, requests, uh, LV Marathon is going to do to do this forward for us. Uh, but also when when the applications will need to to access uh, the Mongo instance, they are going to ask LV Marathon, and LV Marathon is going to ask Marathon who knows uh, where the service is is deployed. Mm. So. Sometimes a uh, marathon uh, is too simple for, for our use cases, but there are other frameworks um, available which might be more appropriate. Mm. Kronos is a quite simple framework as well. It's uh, focused, it's um, thought for man managing cron tasks, uh, scheduled uh, tasks. Mm. Then we have uh, Apache, Apache Odora. Mm, this is a, uh, the framework that, that powers uh, Twitter. And it has a lot of features um, and it's really powerful. Um, it manages um, high performance service discovery. Um, um, and also in case of a, a, when we deploy an application, if the health check fails, it's going to roll back the, the deployment. This doesn't happen with Marathon. 
And then we have uh, Singularity, it's another framework uh, created by HubSpot. Um, it's also powerful. It, it has its own implementation for service discovery as well, uh, Vagabond. Mm. Aurora and Singularity are really have a lot of features, but the, the learning cur curve is steeper than Marathon. Mm. So, me, I'm a Java developer, so uh, I'm, I have not a really sysadmin uh, profile. Uh, my feedback from this uh, experience is that working from, um, with them um, needs a lot, a lot of catch up uh, on, on these technologies because they, they are quite young uh, tools and there are a lot of changes in really short time. Um, from a developer's point of view, I think uh, troubleshooting with service discovery and load balancing problems can be a, might be a bit hard. Um, if we are not familiar with Linux network uh, commands. So this would be the, the bad points. Um, on the good side, we have the, the they have uh, a marathon, most of all, has a really nice developer oriented um, API and that there is a huge community in on internet. So every time we have a problem, uh, we, we can easily find the, the solution on the net. And what is the future ne next uh, features uh, developed by Mesos or they are working on? They are trying to manage uh, better uh, multi-tenant workloads. Sometimes uh, we need more isol isolation between apps that are running on the on the same uh, Mesos slate, and the performance of one of them can be affected by the other. Uh, so. They, they are working on this at the moment and also to give uh, support for databases because until now, um, Mesos was most more or less, uh, well, it, it was addressed to computer-based uh, applications, most of all. Um, but there is the need of, of deploying databases and they are trying to, to manage this uh, in a better way. Mm, that was all. I don't know if you have questions. Mm. No? Everybody is asleep. <laughs> No, nothing. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>